Witches with Livingston and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to express my heartfelt admiration and praise for the remarkable Scottish author Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson's literary legacy has left an indelible mark upon the world of literature, captivating readers across generations with his enchanting storytelling and profound insights into the human condition. Through his words, he could transport us to distant lands, ignite our imagination, and inspire us to embark on thrilling adventures. What sets Stevenson apart as a literary genius is his unparalleled ability to craft stories that resonate with both young and old, transcending the boundaries of time and age. From the timeless classic Treasure Island, which continues to ignite the dreams of young expiring adventurers, to the gripping duality of human nature explored in The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Stevenson's tales are not merely stories, but windows into the complexities of human nature. In his passion for storytelling was infused with an exquisite blend of adventure, mystery, and a deep understanding of the human psyche. Robert Louis Stevenson, with his boundless creativity and enduring tales, has truly earned his place among the literary immortals, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to captivate the hearts and minds of readers worldwide. Mr. Livingston, would you be so kind as to put an end to the cacophony in the background? It would be my pleasure, sir. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. You've just met my noble houseman, Mr. Livingston, a studious gentleman that knows how to properly maintain and manage a formidable estate like my lovely Polter Mansion. And the tiny creature terrorizing some of my household staff would be the typically demure Miss Tangella, whose grace, wit, and charm are second only to her ability to hotwire a 2008 BMW 3 Series sedan in order to ghost ride the poor vehicle over the edge of one of the cliffs at our lovely Bodega Bay. And do we have a most remarkable program in store for you? My purpose in my prior praise of Mr. Stevenson is because tonight... You, you do know that one of these days the two of them shall conspire to smother you in your sleep, do you not? Hopefully sooner rather than later. Tonight we'll feature an impressive film based upon one of his stories, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, from 1960. This is a fantastic film featuring the wonderful Christopher Lee, but not in the titular role. That part goes to Paul Massey. And his troubled fiancé is portrayed by the lovely and talented Dawn Adams. Livingston, who might be our guest this evening? Nobody. Very good. Tonight we'll be joined by nobody to tell us nothing about this film. But since we'll have some extra time, perhaps we'll read more of your mail and check in with the crew of this ill-mannered manor. So don't go away for this to be another night of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned.
my goodness, Livingston. Yes. Do you know what is on at 9 p.m. on Channel 4? I do not. Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry. Mm. Now, listen, the action-packed, tough cop movie that tops them all. Oh, there's a, there's a disclaimer. Intended for mature audiences, parental discretion is advised. We cannot let her watch this, could we? She's probably seen it 20 no, times. That's right. No, no, we don't want her to get any ideas is the problem. Anyways, enough of that. Welcome to Creature Features. It's another one of those nights where we show a film. Hopefully. But it's not one of those nights where we have a guest because all I've got is Tangella and her, her umbrella, parasol. Parasol. And her ugly baby. And her which dead is, baby. No, it's okay if she brings the ugly baby when she has a parasol because she can cover it up, right? I'm not understanding I the logic. It, she t can take the light off of it and then it won't come up on the cameras, right? See? It's in the shade. Anyways, uh, great movie tonight. The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, 1960. This is a fantastic film. Have you seen it? Unfortunately. And you did not like it? It's not my favorite. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a it's a hammer film, or it's a film with hammers. Yeah, she's like a hammer film. She, she was, has a thing for hammers. No, she was having hammer time with uh, our staff before this. So uh, it's gonna be a fun movie. No guests tonight, but we'll we'll read some extra mail and uh, we'll have some fun with the crew. And uh, we think you'll enjoy it, right? You're gonna enjoy it. Oh, will I? He always does. So stick around. We will see you at the next break, and don't get scared. There you are. In each one of these dumb human animals, there is a personality which shows itself only in play. Dumb human animals? Henry, these are not pretty guinea pigs. They are children who cannot speak. But I am convinced that in this case, the not speaking is a refusal of one part of the mind to allow the other part to express itself freely. You suggest they play out what they cannot speak out. Precisely. You are the same Henry Jekyll forever seeking keys to the locked doors of the mind. Thank you, Dr. Jekyll. They do enjoy coming in the afternoon to your garden. They really never want to leave, especially Jane. You see, Ernst, all of my experiments 
are directed towards the freeing of the creature imprisoned within. In your paper, the paper that began all this trouble, you, you wrote of two creatures. In every human personality, two forces struggle for supremacy. I understand. But it was rash to publish before you could prove. Now I don't have to prove anything. Resigning my appointment freed me from idiots who are no more scientists than I am a priest. You have been missed, Henry. Yes, they must have been short of jokes since I resigned. How they laughed at my last lecture. Was that a reason to disappear from professional life? You live like a hermit in the middle of London. Is it wise? If one doesn't want to be torn limb from limb by one's colleagues, it's very wise. Is it fair? Who in the profession has been fair to me? Who, apart from yourself, has even given me a hearing? Forget the profession for a moment. What of the others? Those who care for you? Yes, I see, of course. Kitty has spoken to you. She asked you to come. Think how it is for Kitty. You live here alone, without servants, without friends. What is it like for her? What does Kitty think about this? In six years of marriage, Kitty has never thought about my work. Forget your work for a moment. Your home is in ruins. Your life is in dust sheets. I need privacy for my work. I can't think about anything else. My work is far too near completion for me to stop now. But to what end are you working, my dear Henry? Man has always known that his personality is an uneasy and unsatisfactory combination of conflicting elements. We must accept this conflict and support the good in us. Good, evil. This moral quibbling is useless. Man as he is comprises two beings. One whom I call man as he could be. In his perfection, this inner man is beyond good and evil. And the other man? He too is beyond good and evil. Man as he would be. Free of all the restrictions society imposes upon us. Subject only to his own will. A very dangerous man, my friend. For what civilizes us other than these moral restrictions of which you make so little? We are scientists, Ernst. It is for us to release and understand every force in nature. This higher man you speak of is the weaker element in us. Our lust and our violence feed the weaker man. That is why there are so few saints and so many sinners. Will you cut evil out of man with a scalpel, Henry? How you fall back into the conventional way of thinking, Ernst. I am not concerned with a moral operation, but with the control of every resource of the human personality by science. Here, Toto. Quietly now. Quietly. Quietly now. Quietly. Here we are. That's it. Quietly. 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 more primitive, totally unrestrained energy. What is this? You have turned a placid, affectionate little animal into a, a miniature devil. Within four hours, when the drug has worn itself off, he will revert to his former placid self. Can you not take a violent creature and with some opposite drug transform it to its higher nature? I am working to that end, but first I must understand completely the enemy I have to fight against. Henry, have you experimented with this drug upon any other creature? Excuse me, Professor. Oh. Sorry to disturb you, Henry, but... I'm working, Kitty. I'm sorry, Henry, but Paul Allen is here again. 
Don't give them to him, Henry. He's such a useless waster. Uh, you will excuse me. I will be late for my lecture. Uh, do stay longer. It's so good to have someone who at least begins to understand. I will come again as soon as I can. Goodbye. Let me tell Alan to go. All Paul ever wants is money, my dear. Tell him I will sign his notes as usual. But Henry, he takes advantage of you. If only you'd give a little more attention to... If only you could understand, Kitty. If only you could begin to understand. What do you think, Ernst? I am perplexed and, to be frank, a little frightened. You too. Henry is working in a very dangerous field. He locks himself in that laboratory for days and nights on end. Sometimes he looks so ill. A few weeks ago, I had to carry him to bed. He got up as soon as he could walk. You should have sent for me. Oh, he wouldn't let anyone examine him. One whole night. Oh, it was terrible. Tell me. I was so frightened. Tell me the facts. I heard him in his room. He was shouting. It was a strange, terrible sound. It... It was a fever brought on by exhaustion. But the voice, Ernst. It was a strange voice. See. Kitty, my dear. There is nothing wrong with Henry that rest and yourself cannot cure. Rest, perhaps, but not me. I can't cure anything for him. You are married to a man of very great talent. Genius, perhaps. Such men are always difficult to live with. Surely you must realize Tell that... me frankly, Ernst. Could his mind be seriously disturbed? Disturbed? Seriously enough for him to be sent away. You worry excessively, my dear. Henry is obsessed. He is obsessed with his experiments. Such concentration is unwise but hardly insane. You must try to help him. We must both try to help him. Yes, we must. Goodbye, my dear. I will go this way. a grim kitty. I hate to ask him for help as much as you hate me for asking for it. At least you admit that the situation lacks dignity. What did he say? <laughs> you and Henry are such children. As long as you have your toys and he has his, you're both happy. Damn it, kitty, the hounds are at my heels. Stop enjoying yourself and tell me about it. Against my wifely advice, dear Paul, yes, Henry will save you once again. You're too good to me, kitty. I am. Far too good. I won't ever put you in this position again, believe me. I don't want you to lie for me. Of course you don't. I don't deserve you, Kitty. You don't. But I deserve you. I deserve nothing better than you. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear that I have been tasked yet again to deliver another plea intended to separate you from your hard-earned money. This program now has its own channel and associated apps that allow you to watch the entire Creature Features library and much more. Entitled Creature Features TV, this is a system that works much like Netflix or Hulu. Besides early access to all the new Creature Features episodes, You'll also have access to many other offerings and some archival episodes of the original show with Mr. Bob Wilkins. You'll also have exclusive access to a new Creature Feature show that will be introduced soon and will not be available anywhere else. Your generous but modest monthly subscription fee will also greatly assist in the continued production of the show, so there's that as well. Miss Tangela has asked me to inform you that if you subscribe to Creature Features TV, she will be sure to create more dancing videos just for you. I think not. 
So please visit www.creaturefeaturestv.com to learn more. Thank you for your time. Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night is when we do creature features and he has a smile on his face. No, you don't, do you? Yeah. Why would, you would I do that? If you would smile more often, I think less people would point at you. No one points at me. No, people point at you all the time. I see it happen. They say, oh, look at that bloke. He's, he's not smiling. I wonder why he's so sad. People ask me at the grocer, what? They ask me at the grocer why you're always so sad. And I tell him, he's not sad. He just makes that face. Mm. I was born this way. No, no. You make the meh mm face. Meh? Mm? Meh. Mm. Please interpret Like, no, that. you just said meh. Mm. That's a face that's, that you have. You have a handsome face. I don't know why you want to put... I don't know why you'd want to put meh mm on your face. I thought meh mm was a type of incense. I don't know. I don't speak that foreign language that you understand. Oh. In any case, uh, fun fact about this film, it was, uh, will you please stop that? And you, I don't know how you get cursed all the time, but that does not even look like him. Oh, look, it's got a bottom. Look, it's got an actual bottom on the bottom of the door. Don't know no more of that. Uh, Christopher Lee's favorite movie was this film you're watching now, which surprises me. Why? Because he's been in, in, I believe, I thought, better films than this. He's been in many, many films. Exactly. So why would this be his favorite? I don't know. Yeah, no. And he's not alive for us to ask him, is he? We could have a seance. Is Christopher Lee dead? Yes, he is. He's Quiet. dead. No. A, science, a seance? Seance. That's something she would say. You're far too logical to suggest a seance, young man. I was being facetious. No, I should call you old man. Oh. Uh. He, he makes a face every time I call him an old man. But you know what? You're older than me, and I'm an old man, so you're an older man. That's I am you're... older than you. This you are an old true. man. All right, let's get back to the film, and when we come back, let's uh, do some mail, shall we? We shall. All right, off we go. Back to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. See you soon. Ow! What's wrong with you? I'm sorry you won't come. How can you bear these endless dinner parties, Kitty? Oh, they can be quite gay. To listen to a lot of braying asses full of cant and hypocrisy. These are my friends, Henry. Kitty. Let's both take the evening off. You from being social and me from being antisocial. Let's be together tonight. Diana Ashburnham would never forgive me. It would ruin her table. Yes, of course. How stupid of me. Above all, we must not upset Lady Ashburnham's arrangements. Now, Henry, would it be fair? You should have said you wanted me to stay in this evening. I did ask you. I need you tonight, Kitty. Stay. Oh, really, Henry? It's too selfish of you to make such an issue. You may not need friends, but I do. And I'm not going to insult them for the sake of your whims.
against any of your charms. <laughs> your boredom is only too clear. It's my fault. A woman who shows her feelings always loses dignity. Come, Kitty. I offer to show you the other, more amusing side of the respectable society, which bores you so much. And when I do, self. Is it so especially amusing? I feel sure that all those important gentlemen you meet at those sedate dinner parties will agree with me when I say that there is no entertainment that the Sphinx cannot provide. You're very generous with my husband's money. <laughs> women, women are perfect. You are the most perfect woman of them all. From perfect wife to perfect mistress and back again to perfect wife and all within a few hours. Will you have the goodness to take me home? Certainly. Your home or my home? My home. Seems to me, my dear, our long affair is wearing a little thin. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Perhaps we should terminate it before it becomes completely ashes. Yes, indeed. But in that case, dearest Paul, however will you manage financially? You mustn't let that worry you, my dear. After all, Henry Jekyll has always been my friend, while you, his ever-loyal wife, have always made it quite clear to you how much you detest me. <laughs> You're the most utterly shameless man I've ever met. I do hope so, Kitty, because if you ever meet a more shameless man, I might lose you to him. <laughs> That's what your kind of woman wants from a man, Kitty. Complete and utter freedom from shame. Enjoy this place, sir. It's very nearly halfway respectable. You alarm me, my friend. I'm new to your wicked city. <laughs> it's only wicked if you're poor, sir. Thank you, sir. All the very best, sir, and happy nights in London town. <laughs> Another bloody idiot down the sink. <laughs> You fancy that? You, I rather think I could. Come on then, Daisy. It's far past our bedtime. Would the nice gentleman like to buy two lonely girls a drink? With great pleasure. But perhaps you'd rather dance first? You look as if you might be a pretty fair dancer. And you too. Yes, my dear. Good night then, Daisy. See you tomorrow. Hmm. Come on then, I love this tune. Fast little bitch. I've never seen you here before. I've never been here before. It's quite nice, really. Nicer than the Vauxhall or Willie's. Look at the bear gardens they've become. A lady don't walk on her own. I've never been there, either. You don't get around much, do you? 
London and I are virgins to one another. <laughs> I'm a bit on now, wouldn't it? I must go now. That's not very polite, is it? I said that's not the way a gentleman behaves, is it? Picking me up under false pretenses and then dropping me like an old glove. Will you let go, you fourpenny whore? What did you say? What did you call me? Go. Ah! Don't drink too much tonight, my darling. Cunning little kitty cat. Rather a dull husband than a drunken lover. Mr. Paul Allen, is it not? Not if you're one of my bloody creditors. <laughs> Mr. Allen occasionally indulges himself in his pleasantries. Please excuse him. What perfect manners. What an entirely perfect lady you are, Mrs. Jekyll. Don't you think, looking as she is now, that she's the most perfect parcel of lady who you ever set eyes on? Entirely enchanting. I'm tired of your jokes, Paul. Please don't leave, Mrs. Jekyll. Your husband is an old acquaintance of mine. I've wanted to meet you for so long. Indeed. You're very civil, mister. Hyde. Edward Hyde. Please. I hope I don't intrude. Oh, don't worry about that, old boy. Mrs. Jekyll absolutely adores intrusions. Anything to lighten the burden, eh, Kitty? Isn't that so, my dearest? My icy snow princess, my frozen honey pot. Perhaps you'd rather I left, Mrs. Jekyll? Perhaps. Don't be an ass, my dear boy. Jekyll isn't a possessive type at all. Damn good chap, Henry. Best friend I ever had. Absolutely first-rate fellow. I think it's time we left. Come along, Paul. Do forgive us. Yes, do forgive us. We've got to go home to do our duty. We always do our duty, eh, Kitty? <laughs> We're under a great obligation to Kitty. Stop it, stop it at there once. There they go again. One last dance. Waltz for lost lovers. Then home. Perhaps you'd care to dance with me, Mr. Hyde. With great pleasure. Oh, the heck with it. Yeah, it's about time, too, so. Do you know my husband, Mr. Hyde? Quite well. Will you be calling on us? Indeed, I will. I have business with Henry and uh, friendship, I hope, with you. I hope so. Mr. Hyde, I trust you. You may do so completely. There, that fellow there. I'm all right. Are you sure, Jenny, that that's him? He tried to force me. And when I wouldn't, he turned on me like an animal. Friends of yours, old boy? Are you going to do something for this young lady, or do I have to teach you to behave like a gentleman? Go to hell. That's right. How dare you talk to a gentleman like that, you drunken lout! Will you take me home, Paul? Women have no sense of honor. How can I leave my friend here like this? I'm giving you one more chance. Give the little lady a few sovereigns and there'll be no more said. Good night, gentlemen all. I told you to go to hell and take that trollop with you. I'll teach you manners how he leave his little friend to look after him. For God's sake, man, don't kill him. You ill, old boy? Let me alone, Jekyll. Let me alone, Jekyll. I must get back. I must get back. Leave me. Leave me. Damn you, 
Welcome back to Creature Features. We'll get back to the movie in a moment. But we've got to do some mail because look at all this mail. It all came in the post, right? Normally it does. No, normally it comes by email, but you cannot send a box by email. I've learned this the hard way. An enclosure does not mean an actual package. No, it does not. No, I tried to send, I tried to send some sweets back to my mum. Didn't work. Not through email, so I had to use the post. You never cease to amaze me. I never cease to amaze myself either. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? I have a letter from Germany, from a Tatiana. Is it in German? No, it's in English. Tatiana Strange. Stranger. No, it says Strange. I know it doesn't. Do you think her name is actually Stronger? Stranger. Oh, this is lovely writing with the gold pen. It gets better. This is incredible. All right, let's see what we got from Tatiana in Deutschland. Deutschland, very good. Deutschland. All right. She goes, hello, Vince. Oh, look, you know, I know she's German because she spelled it hello. H-A-L-L-O. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Vincent Livingston and Tangella. I would like to thank you for producing the world. No. I would like to thank you for providing the world with unusual entertainment. You know, if anything's unusual around here, it's this guy. Ugh. Otherwise, there would be nothing but morons going on and on about the Kardashians and what, what's not on YouTube. You know, she's right. The Kardashians get way more press than we do. They certainly do. The Kardashians don't live in a haunted house. The Kardashians never played in a major rock and roll metal band. Not yet. And the Kardashians never blew up a, a, a restroom at Yankee Stadium, did they? Ooh. You're absolutely right, love. Um, I have some questions. Where does Vincent's accent come from? Dutch. Oh, I've never heard that one before. Interesting observation. No, no. My accent is what happens to a British accent who's been in America for... 35 years, right? Too long. Too long. It becomes a mishmash. Yeah. My mom, when I call her, she, she goes, oh, who's on the phone? Who's this yank on the phone? Right? You've heard her say that before. I've heard her say that. I, I think she's, she's realistic. I don't think she's, she's faking it. All right. Uh, where in Germany was Livingston born? Heidelberg. Heidelberg. He was, he was born where the Heidels were, right? It's That's the Berg of Heidel's. Not quite. What Heidel that City means. is what it means, right? No. No, it means castle. Heidel. Oh, Berg means castle. Berg is a castle. Oh, Heidel Castle. He was born in Heidel Castle in the dungeon. Oh. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. All right. Why doesn't Tangela ever talk? She talks all the time. She just won't speak to people she doesn't know, or when the camera is on. As soon as we turn the camera off, it's like she's rather shy. No, she's not shy at all. She just doesn't speak for some reason. I don't know why. All right. I regret not being able to send a donation as artists are making less money than ever before. We know about that. And don't worry. It's fine. Just make sure you subscribe on YouTube. It's free. And that's like money to us, right? 
I believe so. It is. No, no, no. Do you know that only 20% of the millions of people who watch us on YouTube have subscribed? Only 20%. Only 20%. And all these people are watching our program right now who have not pushed a single little button that says subscribe. It'd be so nice if you did that. And I, I might stop griping about it for a while, right? Well, I guess you have to promote it. I should. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have, however, enclosed a poem that I hope you will enjoy. Keep up the good work. Dark greetings from Berlin, Tatiana. All right, this looks like, oh, this is an absolutely wonderful poem. And it's too long for me to read, but I shall enjoy this in private, Tatiana. Thank you so much for the note. And we hope everything is wonderful in Germany. Berlin. Next stop, Mr. Livingston. Berlin's in Germany, right? As far as I know. Oh, my goodness. You know, I think you yeah, can package. get more. All right, package, and this is the letter that came with the package. And this is for Ms. Tangela. Oh, look at this. And you drop something. All right, this is a little something for the Lady Tangela. You know, there's only one person that calls her the Lady Tangela, and that's Dave from Oregon, right? We from have him Oregon, there. yes. No, he's, he's quite generous with the gifts. What do you get? Looks, what is that? Looks like a wallet of some sort. That's lovely. No. A portemonnaie. Is it for money no it's a oh, it's, it's a writing thing it's some type oh, of oh it's charcoal pencils charcoal oh it's a pencil set there's a whole slew of them in there all right what else you know she's quite the artist you don't want to see her art though it's quite dark dark is not the word oh, look at this this is a an easel what is this hold it still so i can see u.s art supply 140 piece Mega wood box art painting and drawing set with color mixing wheel and a pack of 9 by 12 draw and sketching pads. Something else to make a mess. No, you know, it's good because she needs to color more often, right? And she won't be chasing our staff about with a hammer, right? Thank you, Dave. It's a wonderful gift and it's going to keep her out of trouble for a while. And that is a gift to me, not to her. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Lake City, Florida. Robin. Robin. Robin, is that Smithery? I can't read. Not sure. Lake City, Florida. Uh, you know, I like the notes from Florida. Because, you know, you always hear about Florida man, but seldom do you hear about Florida and woman. Florida weather. No, because they're busy writing to us. That's why. All right, dear Vincent, Miss Livingston, and Tangela. Uh, thank each of you for having amazing movies. Best of all, uh, it's each of you that makes Creature Features so great to watch. I was so thrilled to find your YouTube channel one night, and I am now so thrilled. I can truly say each of you make it worthwhile. I look forward to the intermissions with y'all as much as I do the movies. Much love to each of you, Robin Smithery. P.S. If y'all are ever in Florida, you are welcome to stay with us on our farm. Tangella, you can use the pitchfork too. You know, well, I wonder what kind of farm they have. Why would they need a pitchfork? Well, you know, use a pitchfork for pitch. Pitch? You, you know what pitch is, don't you? No. That's, that's the mixture of hay and manure that you find in a barn. Oh. And that's, this is a fork that you use. You do not fork it into your mouth. Either. I thought it was because you would use it to pitch something to a wagon. No, let's say he's a sportsman. All right, last one. Last one. Here we go. Oh, this is heavy. Indeed. My goodness, what could it be? Oh, my goodness. I've never seen anything like this. This can't be for me. No, this has got to be for you. All right. Send that to the young lady. You're going to like this. All right. Hello, Vincent Tangela and Livingston. My name is Rich Schumacher, and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I discovered your show last week, Halloween, when I was looking for The Night Stalker on YouTube. Since then, I have been hooked on your show. I play it while I'm working in my shop. I have to stop and watch when you take breaks and do mail or interviews. Well, stop working now because you're on mail, sir. You play a lot of movies that I grew up on. The Night Stalker, Sinbad, Gargoyles, etc., Brings back childhood memories of being afraid of the dark. I have an Etsy store called Epic Works where I make hoof shoes and monster feet for cosplayers. Show, pull it out. Look at that. 
That's a pair of shoes. That's a hoof. Someone is going to oh my wear God. that? I, I, I want to see her wear that next week. I haven't closed a pair of hoof shoes for Tangella since she's a little devil. I thought she should have cloven hooves, so I made her a pair. They do make a clip-clop sound when you walk in them, so that may get annoying for everyone in the mansion. You know, if that slows her down a bit, I think the staff in the mansion will be quite pleased to hear that clop-clop sound. Uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, Rich. P.S. I had to guess on the size. If they don't fit, let me know her size, and I will make another pair. She's a, what are you, size like six, right? No, size five? Size five. And those look close. We'll make them work. Thank you so much, Rich. That's wonderful. And uh, the Etsy store is called Epic Works with an X. Those are the uh, strangest shoes I have ever seen. Those are the most wonderful shoes I've ever seen. Is that it? That's it. That's it for mail. We'll now get back to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. And when we come back, uh, Hendrew has something he wants to show us, right? I believe so. Right. All right. Off we go. Back to the film. See you soon. Why must you work so late, my dear? Not that you missed anything very brilliant tonight. Oh, Lord, those formal dinners. You really should have come, Henry. It's too unfair to expect me to carry the whole burden. If one lives in society, one simply has to respect social conventions. I'm exhausted. Not that it's of the least interest to you, I suppose. <laughs> you live in a world far too remote for these mundane matters. For heaven's sake, Henry, say something. I need you, Kitty. I need you desperately. Henry, I'm tired. Please. What are you really like, Kitty? I'm your wife, that's all I am. But the woman inside you. Is that woman my wife? Henry, isn't it a little late for these obscure discussions? Will we ever know who we really are? Who are you, Kitty? Who are you? Your hand's bleeding. My hand. But who am I? 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 <laughs> My dear Paul, you have no idea what a pleasure it is to be in your company again. You should have been here last night. Wonderful fun. Still, I'm glad you like the old place. Admirable. Rather like Fortnum and Mason. I don't see the similarity. You can buy anything here. Oh! <laughs>
Tigress. Tigers needn't lick their lips over her unless they're very rich. Is she so exclusive? Only princes, pashas, millionaires, or distinguished actor managers need apply. She's not in the prep school class. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> The unattainable Eve with her apples and snakes. It's pleasant to see you again, Mr. Allen. You have a new admirer, my dear, Mr. Edward Hyde. Enchanted. My sincere compliments. You were most kind, Mr. Hyde. Such natural manners. She only uses Christian names in bed. Well, ladies, it seems that I must entertain you both. I trust that you will not be too disappointed. Oh, we just have to manage somehow or other. Thank you for your confidence. You've come to the wrong room, Mr. Hyde. I don't entertain here. I see that your partner guards you constantly. Keep away from him. He is dangerous. Good night, Apis, my sweet. Your friend talked to me like a common whore. In all fairness, he never implied that you were common. Just how much money did you have in mind, Mr. Hyde? I would not insult so beautiful a woman by offering her anything so trivial. So, thank you for your politeness, but good night. Don't mention it. I have to dress. Don't let me prevent you. But I have an appointment. I'm afraid you'll be late. What could possibly detain me? I intend to. You are too impertinent, Mr. Hyde. Yes, that is so. <laughs> you have an amusing approach. Merely direct. You are very confident, aren't you? Could a man without confidence approach you? The men who beg get nothing. I do not beg. If a man buys, he pays much for very little. I am not buying. You do not buy, you do not beg. 
Is there anywhere a man who simply takes? I am that man. I thought you were. What does perhaps mean? Edward, why perhaps? How do I know? But you know what you feel. We English never know what we feel, my dear. But you will come again soon. I don't know. Say you will. I told you, I don't know. Of course, you have a nice cold wife to go back to. What an amusing idea. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com The official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, you're a little bit late. Quite a little bit, right? Quite a bit, actually. It's all right, though. You haven't missed too much. Uh, we're watching The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, 1960. And you know what's an interesting thing about uh, this film? No. Is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, 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 11 years later, Hammer made a film called Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde because they liked making this film so much. They wanted to make another was she a nun? I don't know what the connection is. Sister Hyde? Sister Hyde. Oh, Sister Hyde, like as in Sister Mary. Mary Magdalene. Hyde. Right, right. No, that's, he, he made a pun. Did she hide a lot because she had a bad habit? or? I, the, the hell is freezing over right now. He made a pun. You didn't catch that. You didn't catch mine. No. Oh, all right. Well, we're joined by Andrew. And uh, Andrew's here because he wants to show us uh, a toy. What is that? A toy? Not a toy. It's a skateboard. That a, oh, look at this. A, a oh. professional skateboard friend of mine um, made for a me. A professional skateboard friend. What's his name? Um, Anthony Eagle. You might Wait a minute. You and, skateboard? Um, That's I, your rage? Well, you know, if he comes in the home with, no, with, with bruises on his face and Tangella did not do it, it's because he was riding a skateboard. Hmm. Yeah, he made this. It's... Uh, a one of a kind from uh, art that one of our uh, fans sent in. I was going to say that looks like something familiar. So, are these being mass produced? No, this is a one of a kind. One of a kind, and he made just for you. Have you have you tried it yet? The wheels look clean still. Mm, just a little bit around them in the mansion. Does it go fast? It can. Right now, how do you change the tiny motors? There are no motors. Oh, it's one of those. What are you talking about? Well, I thought all skateboards nowadays had motors. No. Oh, dear. What do you mean, oh, dear? I see, I see people going uphill on a skateboard. With a motor. Yeah. With a motor. They have motorized skateboards, right? I'm yeah. not insane. No. Is it gas I've or not diesel? gone mad. Electric. Yeah, he needs, he needs to get out of the house more often, oh. right? No, you need to see the world. You need, you need to go out and ride an electric scooter. I have no time. Tangella took me for a scooter ride. Electric First scooter. One? Electric scooter, right? No, you plug them into the wall and they go. After you unplug them. After the charge. 
Oh. Enough of this guy. Anyways, let's get back to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. And uh, when we return, uh, something fun's going to happen, right? No. All right. Maybe. Maybe not. See you soon. Good morning. I have an appointment with Dr. Jekyll. He's away. Well, perhaps I could speak to Mrs. Jekyll. Bit early to call on a lady, isn't it? Says he has an appointment with the doctor. Ask Mr. Hyde to come up. <laughs> he already has. Mr. Hyde. What a pity my husband is away on business. What a pity. That will be all, Nanny. Forgive me for receiving you in here. Lately, this house has become unused to visitors. Please, don't mention it. Being the wife of a recluse, is not an easy role. You've heard of my husband's strange way of life? Yes, I'm afraid it's common talk. Perhaps I can help you with your business. Business can wait. Since our chance meeting, I wanted so much to see you again. Mr. Hyde, I hope that because of the circumstances of our first meeting, you won't come to any wrong conclusions. It's because of them that I've been trying to put you out of my mind. You see, I have no wish to uh, trespass on Paul's... Uh, Paul's what? Paul's friendship, I was about to say. <laughs> the question of trespass hardly arises. Mr. Allen has no property rights in me. And, uh, Henry? Henry leads his own life. He doesn't seek my approval. And I don't seek his. Is that wrong? We who seek no one's approval are not concerned with right or wrong. What are we concerned with? The pursuit of pleasure, the fulfillment of desire, exciting alternatives. <laughs> alternatives to what? To the boredom of being a neglected wife and the humiliation of being a rejected mistress. You overestimate my freedom from convention, Mr. Hyde. Forgive me. I was forgetting that even the most honest of women need to be courted with the most dishonest of phrases. <laughs> I must say you are honest. A trifle obvious, perhaps, but honest. Listen to me, Kitty. Why should we pretend? From the moment I felt you in my arms as we were dancing, <laughs> our future has been clear to both of us. Oh, sir, you take far too much for granted. <laughs> great affairs always begin without discussion. My great affair has already begun. It was well advanced before ever you appeared on the scene. I wonder what? is the special quality in a man as weak, unscrupulous, and utterly unreliable as Paul Allen. I don't question your description, Mr. Hyde. Well, then, why? I merely happen to love him. Love? Love is an idiocy. <laughs> an idiocy of mine, perhaps, but a fact. I love Paul Allen. my own observations, Ernst? I'm afraid I do. There appears to be an accelerating of your entire metabolism, as if your life were suddenly burning itself up at a much faster rate. No, 
I will not be your bank clerk any longer, Paul. Kitty, darling, why not let Henry take care of life's little problems and leave us its gaiety? No, I'm sick and tired of being you. How can you talk about love in this way? You hypocrite! These are debts of honour. I can't go bad on them. Honour? <laughs> what a typical gentleman you are, Paul. I hope so. All your honour staked on a card so you've none left for any man or woman. I see. Paul? Paul? So that is your diagnosis, Ernst. You think me a simple-minded opium eater. You underestimate me, my friend. I can diagnose opium addiction. But your addiction, I suspect, is something less familiar and more damaging. Thank you, Ernst. Ah, Mr. Allen, perhaps you can persuade our old friend to lead a more sensible life. Goodbye, Henry. It's hardly my speciality, but I'll try. Oh, my dear Henry, what are you doing here? Search for the elixir of life? I leave the life search to you and your friends. What do you want? Oh, merely to thank you, my dear Henry, for your extraordinary generosity. Thank you for your gratitude. And now I must get back to my work. I... I wondered, Henry, if, uh, if you could manage... My experiments are very costly, Paul. I'm afraid I've rather overreached myself, with your help, of course. I, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry indeed. Don't bother to call again for a while, Paul. I shall be going away. Oh, you're going far. I wonder. <laughs> well, I suppose you lied your way successfully out of debt again? Unfortunately, no. I must be losing my grip. You refuse to help? But what will you do? It's good to see the Jekylls reunited at last. But what will you do, Paul? Please, don't disturb yourself on my account. You won't do anything desperate. Apart from continuing to live, nothing. I have determined to discover all that Hyde can reveal. My bank and my solicitors are instructed to regard him as my attorney in my absence. My heir and executor, if I fail to return. For do I want to return to a life of frustrated isolation and loveless misery? My name is Nikita, and I live in Apex, North Carolina. I just wanted to let you all know that you are wonderful, and I do love this show, and it brings back so many memories for me from my childhood. I think you guys are doing an awesome job. Keep it going. Thank you all. Take care. And have a great day. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned.
You know, uh, Tangella, this film confuses me because Dr. Chekhov is not as attractive as Mr. Hyde. It's supposed to be there the other way around, is it not? In the original story, I imagine. Hmm. Well, it just seems rather peculiar to me that they would reverse those roles. I just what God's name is she doing? She wants to be on TV. No, no, just Dustin, just Dustin. You know, she. While we're filming. Are you filming? So sorry about that. So sorry. <sighs> right. Are you wearing your shoes? Let show show us your shoes. Let's see. Put them up. Let's see. Put them up all the way up. There we go. You can put your do. There you go. A, she makes a nice pony, does she not? It's a cloven hoof. It is a cloven hoof, and look, it's all dusted and. Wow. Now you've got a shoe shine person available to you. That's that's very nice. So uh, this movie so far, what do you think, Mr. Livingston? I think it's rather strange. It's rather strange. Well, it's it's strange, like these shoes, right? Those I. They call those shoes. They are shoes, but it's it's strange and wonderful at the same time, right? To it's you, It's like perhaps. a dichotomy. A dichotomy. Right, right, something like that. All right, well, uh, what do you say uh, we get back to this film? Please. And then uh, when we get back, perhaps Mrs. O'Connor can find another portion of the household to maintain. I would recommend that. Right. All right, off we go to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. We will see you soon. Damn bad luck. Oh, well. Luck's a bitch, old boy. <laughs> I shouldn't think so. Always have the best possible luck with bitches. Almost always, anyway. <laughs> well, I'm Bill. Hello, old chap. Goodbye. My dear Edward, just the one man I was hoping to run into. Will you have a drink? Thank you. Wait, I'll bring another glass, will you? Business problems? You know my weakness? Women. Gambling, my dear boy. Women aren't a weakness, they're a recurrent necessity. But I thought that one of these necessities of yours was in the delightful habit of honouring your debts for you. You can't trust anybody these days. Oldest friend lets me down, oldest mistress lets me down. No one to turn to. What are you in for? About 2,000. Sell your soul. Gladly. No takers. I'll take it over. My soul? Now, that would be about as useless to me as it is to you. I meant the debt. Well, that's, that's extremely kind of you, Edward, but I couldn't possibly permit it. I'll stake you to 5,000. Are you quite sure this is convenient, Edward? I mean, it, it's really very, very kind of you, and I'm deeply obliged. Just pass the notes over to me as they come in. Don't you think it would be better, perhaps, if you were to give me the five now and then leave me to... No, I'm afraid that's the only way. Of course, if you'd rather not leave yourself in my hands... Well, I'm only too happy to be in such extremely generous hands. It's very kind of you. There are other ways you can repay me. London is your oyster, my dear boy. And I am the one who can open it for you. Open it wide. Break the hinges. Rifle its pearls.
Nothing but promissory notes, useless bits of paper, and now you want to give us more. Have you ever known me to Welsh on a debt of honour? No. Nope. It's a bit thick, you know. Night after night. Look here, Everton, if you're trying to insult me... Oh, then... don't be an ass, Alan. We'll take your notes. We'll take anybody's notes. <sighs> My dear fellow, what else is there? Is London only good for a week's entertainment? Think of something else. I have. And we've done it. And incidentally, I've, I've done the five, too. So soon. My dear Paul, that is one talent you really do have. You can spend money faster than any other man in London. Well, do you think that perhaps... Continually. That you are a fool. Well, I suppose I could try Kitty again. Try me instead, my friend. What a really good chap you are, Edward. And I'll try, Kitty. What the devil do you mean, Hyde? Well, that should be simple enough even for you to understand. I'm telling you to obtain your mistress for me. You unspeakable devil. <laughs> How very amusing. Paul Allen, breaker of every law in the moral code, is shocked into morality. You, you vile, disgusting. Disgusting, degenerate. Be rational, my friend. I'm asking for the temporary loan of a proven adulteress, of whom you yourself have grown somewhat tired. You go back to hell! You, Nanny. Mr. Hyde, I hardly expected to see you again. Do you make a practice of breaking into other people's houses? Your husband, unlike yourself, trusts me with all that he owns. You've seen him? Yes. I will not ask you under what circumstances you saw him. But I'd be delighted to give you a full account of all Henry's doings since he deserted you. I prefer not to know. But should you see him again, perhaps you'd have the goodness to give him this. With pleasure. Now, suppose I see Mr. Allen. Is that another note for him? I prefer to give Mr. Allen my messages personally. Good night, Mr. Hyde. Please have the goodness to leave. I have Paul Allen here. In my pocket. <laughs> what do you mean? Allow me to present your lover. A handful of bad debts. Perhaps you would care to buy him back? Come, Mrs. Jekyll. Why not sell what you have so often given away? <laughs> I might agree to your preposterous suggestion, Mr. Hyde, were it not for the fact that you utterly repel me. Price of a quart and a gin, Gov. Just a quart, Gov. Go on, Gov, will you? Will you, Gov? Just a quart. Oh, oh, oh.
Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. so hatefully to one another. Because we're cowards, my darling. We want everything. Let's go away, Paul. Let's start a new life together. We will, my love. We will. Right. Bring him out just after I go out. Right. Well, what about it, dear? <laughs> Come on, you unwise virgins. Come on. <laughs> Oh, you'll get your rent tonight. I yeah. said, Mrs. Blair, I said, you'll get your money tonight. Well, it's never let you down yet. Mind you, I think she charges through the same as the grave, Mrs. Blair. Mm -hmm. Nice timing, my love. She's very religious, isn't she, Mrs. Blythe? Yes, she has her own man. Pity, really. I rather fancied him. What are you worried about? You got your money without working tonight. Here, one for you, one for you. Oh, yeah, one for you. Come on, I'll buy you a drink.
destroyed my formula and drugs. But I fear that Hyde has too much influence over me. No degeneracy is low enough to satisfy him. I have locked the door. Dr. Jekyll. Come on, come on. yourself get into the hands of such a man. You and Henry left me no alternative. Paul, we should have had the courage to go away together years ago. Darling Kitty, be realistic. Could you ever have lived on my gambling lesson? I'm so sorry to intrude. What the devil are you doing here? I have a message from your husband, Mrs. Jekyll. He has decided to forsake a situation which is too difficult for him to contend with and has asked us for a final reckoning tonight at the Sphinx. He does so want our last evening together to be gay. Until tonight, then, Mrs. Jekyll? Paul? I wonder what he's up to. I don't want to go, Paul. I'm frightened. Listen, Kitty, this could be the solution to all our problems. If Henry's decided to get out, then he's bound to make a decent settlement. But if you'd left him... What a fool I am! This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Feature. She ran off to take off those hoofs. They were rather large. No, it looks painful to have cloven feet. Right? I can imagine. I mean, no, imagine you've got your toes separating in the It must be hideous. I thought she was born with them.
You think she was? Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible. You I think you'll know. pay for that remark. Right, right. In any case, we'll get back to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll in a moment. But first, I've got to take care of some home business. Andrew, I've asked you back because uh, this third floor toilet issue is becoming somewhat rather inconvenient to me. And you know why? Tangella uses that toilet. And now that it's not functional, she comes down and uses the one in my room. When are, when are, when are we going to get this bloody toilet Still fixed? waiting on special parts for Tracy's trying to find special Victorian plumbing parts for that toilet. It's not easy to find. They are rather scarce. So let's just replace the entire bloody thing. You can't really we'll do it. A, the pipes are different sizes. And they put did a modern toilet seven. inside. Then, then she could use a modern toilet. Yeah, not, but it wouldn't look proper. I mean, it just, you've got to have the aesthetics. I don't care how and it the, looks. She's using the, the, the loo in my, my chambers, and it's becoming rather inconvenient for me. Because every time I go to use it, she's inside. I don't know what she's doing in there. I don't think she's doing any business. She just rather bothers her. Who's in my loo? All right. You know, this is, this is what life is like in a Victorian mansion. It's not all ghosts and spooks and, 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 and fun stuff. It's, it's broken Victorian toilets that have no parts available. Finding you know, parts that are not available. No, I've got a plan. I shall invest some money and create a new business called Victorian Toilet Company Incorporated. And then? I shall provide parts for... Victorian toilets. And who will install them? I don't care who installs them. They will be available for other households who have the same issue. Hmm. I don't know. It's an idea. Write in. Let me know what you think in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or write us a letter explaining why I should not do this. And where should they send that letter? Oh, well, they could send it to our creature feature mail thing, right? Oh. That's the way to send us mail. Right. Or email. Very nice. Or email. All right. Let's uh, finish up the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. And uh, when we return, um, something will happen, right? Always. Always. Off we go. See you on the other side of the credits. Don't go away because Tangelo will be back. Bye. understand don't you as soon as I get this tedious business over I shall join you there don't keep me waiting too long I had no idea that Henry was familiar with this place it seems to me that we never knew Henry quite as well as we thought where is Mr. Hyde? All is prepared in the room of the Signora. Indeed. I, uh, I think I'd better go and see what this fellow's up to. You wait here. Don't be long, darling. Champagne for Madame. My dear Paul, how very considerate of you to be on time. But where is your enchanting mistress? We can't possibly have our party without her. Surely we can leave Kitty out of this? Hardly. 
is going to wait downstairs until this damn business is over. Now, where's Henry? Naturally, you're impatient to see your old friend. Let's get on with it, Hyde. By all means. He would like to speak to you first, privately. What the devil is all this? He has certain arrangements providing for your future which he'd like to complete with you. Don't hesitate, Paul. This meeting could finally solve all your problems. Let's get it over with, then. No one in here, Hyde? Look more carefully, my friend. But don't be ridiculous, Hyde. There's no one in here. is here. You like me in this? I like you in this place. I love you in any place. The pattern of justice is complete. Whose room is this? Mine. At last.
I love you, Edward. Love? Just love. You don't know me, and yet you love me. I don't care about knowing. You animal. You don't care whether I'm good or evil. All the men who bought me, they knew about good and evil. So we dispense with the unnecessary. Good, evil, and love. No, not love. I can't love. I know nothing about love. That's sad for you. And maybe for me. But I still love you. Good night, my love. Good night. Sleep well. Sleep well. be free. Everything I do is directed toward that end. It isn't true. You murdered that girl. You murdered her. You revenged yourself on Paul Allen. You revenged yourself. And Kitty. Poor Kitty. What will become of her? All in order to free me. None of them were in your way. But you are in my way. Unfortunately, my dear Jekyll, I can't destroy you without destroying myself. And so you destroy those others instead. But through their deaths, I will become free of you. Society will blame you, it will hunt you, and force you to remain hidden as I have had to hide. You hate me. I have no feelings toward you whatsoever. I do only what is logically necessary. Come now, Jekyll. Admit you're defeated. End this struggle which you must lose. Never. You must lose, Jekyll. You must. Is it wise to be here? In a few hours, they'll be searching for you. You must 
lose, Jekyll. You must lose. What have I done? What have I done? The arrangements were made by Dr. Jekyll? For him, by his friend, Mr. Hyde. They were to dine together last night with the ladies. Mr. Hyde is a good friend of the Signora Maria. What else do you know of this Mr. Hyde? A very free-spending gentleman. As apart from his virtues as a client. He always seemed a perfect gentleman. That's all I know, Inspector. And Dr. Jekyll? I can't say, Inspector. I never met the gentleman. All right, you can go. Inspector. Yes? The management would be prepared, I feel sure, to make certain arrangements with you. If... I'm sorry. It's not possible this time. But there's always a next time. I suppose uh, Dr. Jekyll could have arrived and left by the back door. With this Mr. Hyde. And the woman Maria. Well, we'll soon find out. We'll keep this place closed. Now, after this, what we need is a visit to the doctor. Go on, Rogers. So, my dear Ernst, you are the only one I can look to. You can perhaps help to save something of the life and honor of your truly repentant friend, Henry Jekyll. Come here, will you? Yes, sir. Now, want me a minute? Ernst will come. I know he will. To his death, no doubt. What do you mean? You see, I don't have your highly laudable respect for life, Jekyll. What can I do? To whom can I turn? Yes, sir. You all right, sir? Yes, yes, quite all right. There's a hamper over there. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to take it into the mews for me. Certainly, sir. Can you manage alone? It's a bit heavy, sir, but I think I can manage it. Good.
It would seem, from the evidence of Professor Litauer, that the balance of Dr. Jekyll's mind was disturbed by dangerous experimentation and addiction to drugs. In his deluded state, he executed a diabolical revenge for imagined wrongs and at the last took his own life. Mr. Hyde is fortunate indeed to have escaped from this holocaust. The case of Dr. Jekyll is a solemn warning to us not to meddle with the divine pattern of nature. Death by suicide. Thank you, gentlemen. The proceedings are closed. A fine man. A fine mind. But he failed to realize that the higher man is free of all restraints. The higher man? He lives solely by energy and reason. He takes what he wants. There is no Jekyll in him. For one moment, you sounded like poor Jekyll. He also. Mr. Hyde, are you unwell? I must leave immediately. Are you sure you feel able? Goodbye, then. Your voice. Leave me now. Leave me. As you wish. Go 
God help you. I have destroyed him. And yourself, my poor friend. Only I could destroy him. And I have. Henry Jekyll, my duty to arrest you on a charge of willful murder. And that's the end of the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. You know, I did not expect that ending because of the last Dr. Jekyll film I saw did not end quite like this. No, it did not. No, it ended in a court of law, which is... I, I suppose that's how you should deal with monsters now and then, right? Is through the legal system. It's a civilized way. It is. No, no, no. Instead of this whole burning the castle down, you just send them to jail, right? Mobs with pitchforks. There you go. Mobs with pitch. Lawyers. No, lawyers with pitchforks. Right. Mm. Anyway, so uh, that is it for that movie. We'll show it again someday, or maybe not. I don't know. We'll we'll see what you say because you know sometimes people say, "I did not like this film. Never show it again." And you know I've got to look at comments like this and, and ponder. Maybe we should not show it again, right? Listen to your viewers. Well, you know sometimes the viewers are wrong though because we'll get. One person that says, never show this movie again. And five that say, I love it. I cannot wait till you show it again. Who do I believe? Who's right in this particular opinion? You never know. It's mystery. Democracy. So, that's right. What's new for Mr. Livingston? What's on your agenda? Well, I'm trying to find these parts for the loo on the third floor. Right. No, no. That's been an ongoing issue. And uh, hopefully between you... Mr. Andrew and Miss Tracy. I will have to have a word with Miss Tracy. Well, you've got more going on than that. Well, I do, but you don't want to hear it. I suppose I don't. Now, I've got my own problems. Yes, you do. I don't particularly want to hear yours. All right, well, that about sums it up for us. Uh, Tangela has nothing to say about the film. She's hula hooping. He's complaining about uh, being tasked with finding toilet parts. And uh, I'm just going to sit here till next week when I get to see you again. So, uh, Thank you so much for staying up and watching our show instead of Clint Eastwood, right? They could have been watching Clint Eastwood instead of our film, but they stayed with us, and we hope it was the best choice you could have made. I think it was. Don't you? Of course. No, it doesn't. But uh, come back next week. We cannot wait to see you again, and don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Livingston, I yes. get lots of mail from people who watch our Friday night show who say, where's Mr. Livingston? He's not there. Is he not on the show anymore? And I try to explain you're off on Friday night. But what do you think about perhaps sitting in just for one night on a Friday? You don't bloody pay me enough.